Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw, or maybe I should say paint, an ink koi fish in Procreate. And my voice is almost gone so this is going to be a shorter tutorial, but you know, sometimes they're the best. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. We're going to start straight up with painting the fish, so there are no sketch required for this artwork. So I'm going to just hide the example and create a new layer. And I personally will be using my new ink brushes for Procreate, which I will link in the description below along with a promo code as usual for you guys. But you can use regular brushes that you like for Procreate. You're just going to pick a like straight up black or very very dark grey, as well as a brush that has some texture to it. And the ink brush I'm going to pick, um, I think this streaky squares. And you're just going to sketch the body or draw the body of the fish. But one thing that is important is that you're going to lower the opacity of the brush using the slider here. They're around the middle, so around 50%. And then you're just going to kind of sketch a teardrop shape and you can fill it in. And it doesn't matter if you have some, some overlaps or whatever. That's actually even better. You're then going to sketch the tail by just drawing a few lines just like this as well as the fins on the sides, so they're kind of like triangular shapes but I like drawing them in separate lines because it just gives more texture to the fin as well as a sense of direction. And koi fish tend to have fins on the lower part of their body and I usually just draw one because I feel like drawing both looks a bit much but you can draw both, so just draw one on one side. And depending on the angle of the fish you might want to draw a fin on the top here as well. Once that is done, you're going to blend some of the edges that are a bit too digital looking. And if you have the ink brush set, go ahead and pick the water blender, but otherwise you can use the smudge tool here. And you're just going to go over some of the edges, not all of them, just the ones that are a bit too strong. I also like kind of doing it on the end of the tail and a little bit on the fins as well. Just like that. Maybe this one too. Oh no. And once that is done, we're going to pick a brush that has a lot of outside texture. So the first brush that we use adds some inside texture and I'm going to show you what I mean because I feel like it doesn't make a lot of sense. So the first brush, the streaky square, adds some kind of texture within the color that the brush um, leaves on the canvas. But for the next step we're going to take a brush that has some outside texture. So if you have the ink set, go ahead and pick the bleed brush. And you can see how it compares. You know, this one doesn't have a lot of texture inside, but it has so much texture on the outside. And what we're going to do with that, you can go ahead and create a new layer if you want, but I'm just going to do it on the same layer. And I'm also going to lower the opacity of this one again, around 60 to 70% this time. And I'm just going to go over and mimic what real ink would do. So you would have some spots that are darker. I usually like keeping them around the head as well as kind of tracing the middle of the body of the fish as well, leaving some spots on the side. And you can go and do a bunch of layers just to kind of have some spots to be really dark and some very light. And depending on the brush that you use, you might want to use the blender again to kind of soften the edges, but if you use a brush that had some really nice outside textures, you should be good to go. I'm also going to use like a sketching pencil to add a few details around the face. So I'm going to add some, I guess, whiskers or like a mustache. I literally googled what they were called and I couldn't find it, so if anyone knows, um, please tell me in the comments below, but basically just <laughs> the little lines here in front of the face of our fish. And I'm going to also add some semicircle to kind of just show where the eyes are without going full blown with like detailed eyes because that looks a bit weird. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for the main construction of the fish body. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to refine it a little bit just so it looks more professional and like a complete piece. And the way to do that is by using the eraser. And that's one great thing about <laughs> doing digital ink painting is that you can erase, which 
I mean, if you can do that with real ink, I will be very impressed. <laughs> so anyway, I personally like to use, again, from the ink brushes, the water blender, actually. Yeah. And setting it the opacity to around 50%. And I'm just going to go around and erase some spots to put even more emphasis on this idea of, you know, having ink that bled on the paper. And at this step, you can also add some kind of spots because, you know, sometimes koi fish have two colors to them. You know, sometimes they're red and, and white or like red and yellow or, you know. So it's a really nice time to add some of those spots. It's such a small and easy step, but it makes a massive difference. What I really like to do when I'm doing ink paintings in Procreate is adding some extra elements around the main subject of the artwork because you want to keep the artwork fairly simple because, you know, a lot of ink drawings are very simple, but you still want to make it interesting. So what I do is I create a new layer that I put below the fish, and I'm going to pick a nice bright red for that, but you could go ahead with any other color. I'm going to use, once again, a brush that has a lot of texture to it, so the streaky square. I'm going to create some sort of semicircle, and I might actually move the fish a little bit for that, so just selecting your layer, Clicking on the arrow here and moving the fish where you want. Going back to your new layer and making sure you have the right brush. You're just going to draw like an arc type of shape, just like that. And if you find that your hand is a bit wobbly, you can also just draw it and then hold your pencil and it's going to kind of, you see it smooth the shape. I also like to go ahead and duplicate the layer by swiping the layer here on towards the left and clicking on duplicate and just slightly shifting the duplicated layer to kind of thicken um, the stroke that I did. And it gives this really nice overlap texture and you can merge the two layers that you just created here by squishing them with your two fingers. And you can use the blender again to just kind of merge some of the edges that might be too much or even add some like ink accents toward the, the side. You could also go ahead and just duplicate the fish and then with the arrow tool, you could click just flip horizontal and then flip vertical and just create like a nice circle that way. You could also use some splatters. Um, if you have the ink brushes, you have the splatter brush here. So you just select it, you pick the color that you want. I'm going to go back to black. <laughs> Almost just sang the Amy Winehouse song. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you can add some splatters around and just kind of play around. But basically kind of making your piece a bit more interesting just by using the texture of some brushes. And so that's why it's really important also to have some brushes that you know you like and that you know have a really cool texture to them, as well as a nice like background texture. So yeah, if you're interested in the brushes that I use today as well as like this pre-textured file, I will link the brush set in the description below and I would love to see what you guys create. So make sure to share the result with me either on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.